Okay, guys, in a previous, in a previous video, I um, introduced uh, centripetal acceleration, and I had uh, just sort of given you the, uh, the equation for centripetal acceleration, uh, which I'd like to now sort of derive for you. Um, so this is going to be a uh, sort of a derivation of that equation, a little bit mathy. It's going to require a little bit of effort, but uh, it's actually a pretty fun exercise, and, and I think... Uh, I think you guys might find it interesting and, and uh, instructive. So uh, this is the centripetal acceleration equation. And so to remember, the equation that we had was this. The centripetal acceleration is equal to V squared over R. And that's what we're going to try to demonstrate here. Um, this, is what we're, this is what we're going for. And uh, again, I had just sort of thrown it at you but hadn't really... Um, I didn't really explain where this came from or how one might know that this is the case, and so we'd like to do that now. So centripetal acceleration. And uh, what I've drawn here, I've got this circle, and I put some axes. So I'm, I'm saying that this is a y-axis, and this here is a an x-axis. And uh, the way I'd like to start here is is by establishing. Let, let's imagine first of all that there's an uh, some object is moving in this circle. Okay, and um, we can imagine that it's moving uh, counterclockwise in the circle. And, and what I'd like to do is to start off by thinking about its position vector. So here's the position vector P. So this is P. Uh, and since it's moving, the position vector P is going to change as a function of time, right? As this, as this object moves around the circle, the position vector will change as a function of time. Um, and uh, we can describe the position vector at any time by the the angle theta, which is also right. This is also theta is also going to be a function of time, right? As this as this particle moves around the circle, theta is going to be constantly changing. So um, the position vector is a function of time, and then theta also a function of time. Um, that might be a sort of a strange start, but you're going to see that this is going to pay pay dividends later. So before we, uh, before we move on, uh, uh, we've got to introduce a couple new terms. This is stuff that we haven't discussed yet, although we did do this in honors physics, um, and so it should look familiar. I'm, I'm imagining that this particle is moving, as I said, counterclockwise. So it has, a, in addition to having a linear speed, right, it's got a linear speed. First of all, let's make sure that we recognize that, right? It's moving um, with a linear speed that's tangential, right? So it's got this linear speed, which I'm calling v. So it does have that linear speed. But in addition to that, it has another kind of speed, which is a rotational speed, which is given the Greek let letter omega. The Greek letter omega stands for rotational speed. And that's the, the rate at which it moves in the, in the sense of change in theta over time. And so for the purposes of this little um, derivation, I'm going to define omega well, no, this is how omega is defined, as uh, d theta dt. So it's the rate at which um, theta changes. And this is a, uh, a quantity, well, we'll discuss this later, but it's something called a pseudoscalar, um, which is to say that it isn't a vector in the traditional sense, but we do make a distinction between um, uh, omega counterclockwise, which is what we call the positive direction, and counterclockwise, which is the negative direction. Um, and if, we, if, if we're careful here to define theta in terms of radians, which we will be, so this is in radians, um, then there's a relationship between the linear speed v and the angular speed omega, um, which is that we can say um, v, the linear speed, is equal to omega times r. Um, uh, the reason for this, of course, is that we're, uh, when, when we use radians as theta, then the radians are defined as the, um, the arc length s over r. So if I take the arc length and then divide by the radius, um, um, uh, then I'm going to be able to translate into a linear quantity. And so by taking omega and multiplying by r, we get into the linear speed. Um, so uh, this background information, hopefully we remember seeing it uh, previously, but um, if not, just I think you can follow that, the idea that this is the rate at which the thing is turning, d theta dt. 
the, uh, we won't see this for a while, but it, it will come in later in the derivation to be important. Uh, a couple other things that I'd like to assume, this is a circle, right? So the position vector, while it's changing, it always has magnitude of r, right? The magnitude is always the radius, right? The angle might be changing, which changes the position vector, but its magnitude is always r. So I'm going to say that p always has a magnitude r. So the magnitude of p is r, and then I'd also like to assume that the velocity is constant. Um, so let's just, we can say omega is constant. Or we could say that the magnitude of the velocity vector v is constant. Um, so here are a few assumptions. These are things we're assuming. I mean, if it's a circle, this is definitely going to be true, and we're just imagining it's moving at a constant speed. Remember, the whole point, the goal is to get this. That's what we want to get at the end of this. So let's, uh, let's clear up some space here and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write an expression, and I'm going to use unit vector notation. I'm going to write an expression for p. So I'd like to write, how, would, how could we define p? So I'm going to say that p, in unit vector notation, p is a function of time, and it's equal to, well, let's think about this actually first. Um, p has two parts, right? It has a part in the x direction, and it has a part in the y direction. And we remember that the x component is given by the cosine of the angle theta. In other words, what I can say is p is equal to the, the the magnitude of P, which is R, right? This is magnitude R, so it's R cosine theta. But remember, theta, I'm just going to put a little T here to remember that theta itself is a function of time. Um, I hat, right, because that's this is the X component, plus R sine theta as a function of time, J hat. So this is a potentially a, a messy looking um, expression and it might seem like a lot of unnecessary work here just to define the to find the position um, vector but it will pay dividends in the long run I think so uh, r cosine theta right this is that's what this guy is right here this is r cosine theta r cos theta and this is the y component r sine theta and we're just remembering that as time goes on um, theta will change uh, and that's what causes the position vector to change over time all right, well now, what if I wanted to know the velocity? Ultimately, I want to know about acceleration, right? This is, this is what I'm looking for. So let's first figure out what the velocity would be with respect to time. So let's come up with an expression for v as a function of time, which hopefully we, we can easily see is just going to be dp dt, the derivative, the time derivative of this expression right here. So that's what we want to get next. So let's go about doing this. Um, we're going to, the, the r is a constant, right? That's not changing, so that's just out front. But we're going to have to sort of chain rule this thing here because we get the cosine function and then theta as a function of t. So this is going to be um, r times negative sine theta t. So this is just chain rule. I'm taking the derivative of the outside function times, times the derivative of the inside function. So that's the inside function. That's just d theta dt i hat plus, same thing here, r, derivative of the outside function, that's cosine theta t times d theta dt j hat. Okay, let's see if we can simplify this a little, a little bit if we can. Um, well, first of all, let's note that this thing right here, d theta dt, and over here, this thing, that is omega. That's the definition of omega. That's omega, and that's omega. Um, so it might be useful to, to pull out an omega, and there's also an r here and an r there. So we can factor those two out, and we can say that this is equal to... Um, actually, I'm going to, for, for reasons that I think will be clear later, I'm going to take out a negative. So I'm going to take out negative, I'm going to factor out negative omega r. And that's going to leave us with what here? Well, we're going to have sine theta as a function of time, i hat um, plus, or, uh, da, 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 da. actually, that's a, that's a minus, isn't it? Because I'm taking out a negative. So this is minus cosine theta 
t j hat okay so hopefully you followed me there so far i've just taken out an, an r and an omega in both terms and i took out a minus that's where this negative comes from right and that's why uh, this thing here is a negative i should probably put that in close that parentheses right open and close parentheses here Okay, so um, that's an expression for the velocity vector as this particle moves around, right? At any given time, this is the velocity vector. Um, this is v as a function of t. But again, what are we looking for? We're looking for the acceleration vector. So we're not done yet. Um, so if this is the expression for the velocity vector, let's go ahead and get an expression for the acceleration vector, a as a function of t, which is just dv dt. So I need to go ahead and take the derivative of this whole thing. Well, the negative omega r just kind of hangs out in front there. Negative omega r. And now I have to go ahead and take the derivative of this. And it's basically, uh, this is essentially uh, just like what we did before. We're going to have to chain rule each term in here. So we're going to say here, cosine theta t times d theta dt i hat minus negative sine theta t times t theta dt j hat. Okay? And now we can go ahead and simplify again. We, we, we note once again that this thing here is omega and this thing here is omega. And uh, I can go ahead and bring that, uh, that uh, minus sign through, multiply through with the minus sign, and now I can factor out another omega. And now I'm going to be left with negative omega squared r times cosine theta t i hat plus sine theta t j hat. Close parentheses. And now we have an expression for this acceleration, which is a centripetal acceleration. And uh, most of the heavy lifting now is done. Now we have to try to see what we have in front of us. Um, well, if you take a look here, if I look at this whole thing, this looks familiar. It looks a lot like what we started with, right? We had r cosine theta ti plus r sine theta tj. Well, this is cosine theta ti plus sine theta tj. Well, what if I went ahead and distributed this r to both terms? What happens if I distribute that r to both terms? Well, I'm going to end up with this whole thing exactly, right? If I distribute the r, I end up with r cosine theta ti plus r sine theta ti. In other words, I end up with the position vector. So what I will end up with here, I'll go to black now since we're getting close to the end, I'm going to say that the acceleration vector equals negative omega squared times the position vector. Hopefully you can see by multiplying through by r, I ended up with the position vector that I started with. And this is a very interesting result. It, it, th this you might be saying to yourself, okay, well, that's all well and good, but that does not look like that, right? That looks pretty different. Uh, so we have a little work to do yet, but believe it or not, we're going to find that these are equivalent expressions. So first of all, I mentioned when, when we did this, this is, a, this is the scalar value for the centripetal acceleration, right? This is not a vector quantity as we've written it. This, is, this just gives you, in other words, the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration. So if I'm only interested in magnitude, I can go ahead now and... Uh, Take the magnitude of both sides. Okay, take the magnitude of both sides here, and um, uh, if we take a look at the magnitude here, I'm just going to end up with my centripetal acceleration, a sub c. It's no longer a vector quantity. Equals well, since I'm taking, since I'm concerned only with the magnitude, the negative sign is irrelevant, right? The the um, magnitude is sort of like the double absolute value in a sense, and so we're getting rid of this negative, right? So this is no longer, um, that negative is no longer relevant. So I get omega squared times, well, what is this? What it, we said that the, the magnitude of the position vector is always r, right? Since it's always going to be a radius or distance r away from the, the center. So this is omega squared times r. Well, that looks a little bit closer to where we're going. Um, but I'd like, I'd like to get a V in there, and I remember that um, uh, 
v equals omega r, which means that omega equals v over r. And now I'm, I'm really close to the end, so I can say that this is v over r squared times r. I'm just remembering that omega equals v over r. And so now I can simplify here and I get a sub c equals v squared over r squared times r, which in the end is ta-da, v squared times r. And there it is. So a little bit of work, um, but I think an interesting exercise to kind of uh, prove or derive uh, this relationship that the centripetal acceleration is does have a scalar value equal to uh, v squared over r. Um, so some interesting calculus in there. Uh, take a few steps backward to take a step forward, but um, interesting exercise. Um, uh, hopefully that made sense. We introd I introduced along the way this new idea of, of angular speed um, and, uh, and, and this idea of angular displacement, right? The change in theta being the angular displacement. So that was new, um, although we did do that last year. So I uh, hope that was interesting for you. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it.